How you doing, Jacob? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How are yeah. you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. I'm just going to get started. Uh, I mean, for fans of the first season, of which, of course, there are there are many, uh, what can they expect of season two? Is it is it tonally different at all to to what came before? Yeah, it's definitely tonally different. Um, I I don't want to give too much away about season two because. I, I think that whilst obviously there's the book and people know the book and we do follow uh, a, a, the same track more or less, um, it's I'd say it's <laughs> if you can believe it, it's a lot darker and um, it made more complicated by by uh, the introduction of the theatre. Um, yeah, and Louis just not okay. Nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Audiences get quite excited about new seasons because obviously they want to see what happens to the characters they're invested in to see where the story can be taken. What, what's that experience like for an actor when you get those scripts in for the first time for a second or third or fourth season to, to see what they've done with, with your character? Um, It's quite nerve wracking. It's quite a scary experience to have to... Like, for one, it's just exciting to know that you're going to get to play that character again. But, um, but yeah, it's scary because you don't... You you have your own ideas. I think after you play a character for a certain amount of time, you have your own ideas about what they... Uh, what How they respond to things and, like, who they are. Um, so to put that into other people's hands, even though it's the people that, that conceived of that version of the character... Yeah, it's terrifying. But Rollin very gracefully um, let me and Sam have meetings with the writers' room um, in between seasons, and they asked a few questions about what we thought. I guess with that in mind, that we played the characters now and maybe understood things um, in a different way to 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 them. Yeah, so, yeah. it's a bit of a kind of odd conflict there because you you must feel as an actor you've got complete ownership over a character and a role and yet you have absolutely no power on their fate <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's true but then also you can like depending on the work like on this show we're very like Rollin is very transparent about kind of everything he was telling us as they were writing like what they're thinking and and they're also really open to suggestions and to things changing or to us disagreeing about things like it's it's been a really satisfying creative experience and sometimes as well there's things that I'm like I don't like that Louis does that and then I have to just sit and think about it and then I'm like but he probably would <laughs> he probably would do that that's yeah. me bringing my own judgment mm. Um, of course, you know, it's based, obviously, on, on a very sort of famous novels and sexual novels. I mean, just wonder when when a season progresses, does it get to a point where the novels no longer become a point of reference, if they ever were at all? Does it start just becoming a matter of taking everything from the scripts and, and, and this certain iteration of, of the role? I think it's a balance. Like, you you can't be... Because to, to, to literally do your job every day, you have to use the scripts as your guide. But no, on, on season one and season two, you always we always refer back to the books. We always like I have a copy of uh, that Anne Rice's alphabetary here. I've got like I've still got the book here, and I can look back at it whenever I want. And like yeah, we always go back to Anne Rice on this show because it's full of like it's it's full of details. She was such a like she was so. Um, she was so detailed in her description of where everybody was, where everybody, how everybody felt that like, it feels like a little treat to just kind of cross reference the script to the book. Um, but yeah, there are exceptions as well where you're like, well, this is slightly different. So I'm going to use, I can only use the script as a guide. But yeah. On this show, we always go back to, to the book, but, but generally speaking, I think you've got to be careful as well. You know, it's a balance. 
Yeah, because there's a lot of kind of, I mean, obviously this character is so popular amongst audiences and for, for years. I mean, there's a lot of pressure and responsibility that comes with taking on an iconic role like this. So with that in mind, how pleased were you with the reaction to the first season? It was so well received from, from audiences. I'm just, yeah, I'm just really glad that people accepted me. <laughs> like, and I'm sure everybody didn't, but like, I'm, I'm the people that did. I'm, I feel really grateful, and and I'm glad that I did the character justice. But also that, like, I really love Louis. I really love this character. I'm not like I would be disappointed if 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 he wasn't. Um, if he wasn't executed with like justice, that sounds like he was gonna be sentenced to death. That's not what I meant, but like, you know, <laughs> like it, uh, particularly our version of Louis, I, I I really care about him. I really care about, about getting it as right as I possibly can. But I'm also like, I'm, I'm pretty offline. I'm quite an offline person. So I'm, I also don't know People could be screaming about me, like people could be really furious and I, I probably wouldn't be aware of it. <laughs> That's a, a wise thing to do, to be completely honest with you. But I mean, you've been in, I mean, you've been in Game of Thrones. It doesn't get any bigger than that in terms of audience kind of, uh, having a kind of global audience for a TV show. So have you ever had any kind of really memorable fan interactions on, in, in just if, if not online, at least on the street or at a convention or... Yeah, the most the most memorable one is like I've told this story so many times, so so not boring. But I was on the subway in New York, like after my first or second season of Game of Thrones, and I just heard "fuck yeah, Grey Worm," and I like looked up in like a panic and couldn't. The, whoever had said it had like gone back to whatever they were doing or didn't want to be found out. That was pretty surreal. Weird one. You work obviously on this so closely with Sam, uh, Sam Reed. I mean, having collaborated on, on season one in this show, does that just make it so much more seamless and comfortable when you arrive for, for a second season, when you know that you've you've already kind of broken through that kind of, that barrier, I suppose? Yeah, I have to be careful about how I answer this question. <laughs> but um, all I'll say is that, like, after we finished shooting, me and Sam have been in like constant contact anyway. Like we did, and we did all the press together as well. And we're just, we're just friends. So like, we're chatting anyway. So yeah, it's it, whenever we're working together on season two, it's like, you know, if we're together on season two. <laughs> Had you um did had you met before you you came on to season one? Was that the first time you guys had ever ever met? Yeah, yeah, it was the first time we met. We we met in our chemistry test. And then the next time we spoke was uh I think the day that I got cast, I FaceTimed him and we just chatted about like how we like to work a little bit, but it was mostly just like, hey, <laughs> we're gonna be doing this insane thing together. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask what that what that's like as an actor when you meet a fellow actor, male or, or female, whoever. When you know you've got to shoot some really kind of intimate, very close scenes over the next few weeks, next few months. What's that first meeting like? Is that just a situation? Because that that for someone who's not an actor, that seems like such a bizarre social interaction. Just meet someone, and go, "Hi, I'm Stefan. Nice to meet you. We're going to be doing all of this over the next few months." But as as an actor, is that just something you just get used to over time? Yeah, I think you do get used to it, and I think like. Me and Sam had a bit of rehearsal at the beginning. We'd like, we'd just go for walks around New Orleans. We'd go for, like, we'd walk for hours just around the city and we'd just chat and get to know each other. So then, because I think, like, in order to do any kind of, like, intimate, like, anything intimate with, with somebody, when you're acting, like, you just have, like, trust is the thing. It's the fundamental thing. Is you, you trust that person. You know each other's boundaries. You feel safe. Like... But we had we had that. But by the time we we did anything intimate or like we, I think the first thing we did was was the last scene in episode one in the pilot. That was like in the first week, uh, in the church. But by that point, we knew each other pretty well, so it was, yeah, it was fine. I I've really learned on this job though, like 
how to get comfortable very quickly because you're biting people. I think people forget that like the biting, like when the vampires drink from somebody, that is the most intimate thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, it's like your lips are on their skin for a fairly, quite a long time. <laughs> it's, and that's sometimes, you know, somebody that's in just for that day or, you know, for a shorter amount of time. So you don't really get as much of a runoff. But you get used to it, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I've only got time for one more. I mean, it's, we see vampire shows and films, and they they're so popular. But the, where this one feels kind of different is how it blends so many human themes with the kind of supernatural. I mean, the fact we're delving into racism, into characters who are in the closet. I mean, do you think is that partly what gives this series its unique appeal? Because we've seen vampires before, but rarely with relatable emotions like insecurity or, or guilt and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's like it's it's an incredibly human show it's like the allegory is very it is very much like it wears itself on its sleeve but that's also the nature of Anne Rice's writing she's like she's very these monsters are are painfully human and relatable and uh, it's that that's kind of what's at the core of all of it <laughs> really and she she wrote, you know, she wrote the first book in in grief. She was dealing with unimaginable grief. And that's how she that's how she came up with these characters. Um so yeah, it, it had to that had to be a, a staple of of any adaptation is to like focus on the humanity of the vampires, the humanity of like an eternal or immortal being rather than the sort of monstrous bits. Humans can be pretty monstrous, you know? So it's like, it's, and we see that every day. So it's, it's, I think it's refreshing to see monsters being human. Yeah. And just very, very quickly before I go, I know I'm going slightly over time, but you shot all of this in New Orleans. What's the best thing you ate in New Orleans? Because there's some great food there. I mean, there was a place called District Donuts that I used to go to every morning, pretty much, um, that was just opposite my house. Uh, and they did really good coffee. Iced coffee. I used to have a coffee at, at work that um, that Craft Services used to make for me that was called Milky Splendid. And it was like cold brew. It was like a, like a, a lot of cold brew. And then, like, what was it? It was like half cold brew half milk and then a splendor and it was the it's the best thing ever and just lots of ice that was amazing i lived off that that was my fuel for six months well i have to try and get that go one day i'm still working to try and perfect my gumbo at home and failing but um thank you so much jacob for your time today uh, and best of luck with, with uh, the show and, and all anything to come in the future and i'll speak to you soon hopefully Thanks, Stefan. Yes, take care. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! Hey, you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!